today um, we're going to look at the Holy Spirit and the, and, and, and the need of the Holy Spirit but I'm not going to take it the way I have many times over the years almost every year we talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit and the ways and many of you know many of you have the Holy Spirit but yet again I'm telling you I am re-looking at my own life right because I don't want to fool myself right the Bible says those of you who think you stand be careful lest you fall right I don't want to fool myself and think oh, I'm okay after all, I'm fine no I am doing soul searching and I'm saying I want more I want more Lord I want more because I want to fulfill this task you have for me not because I'm a pastor because I'm your child and you chose me and you have appointed me and you've put me on this earth for the purpose I want to fulfill it I want to fulfill it so today um, as we look at the Holy Spirit, I want us to turn to Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Right? As we get into it, just to let you know uh, the, a little background, uh, in Acts chapter 9, we see the conversion of the Apostle Paul from Saul. He becomes Paul. Right? Uh, God speaks, Jesus speaks to him. Jesus chooses him. And of course says get off your high horse right <laughs> I think that's exactly what happened to him he gets thrown off his high horse and I believe he's doing that to many of us today why it's not because he hates us because he's chosen us he can't use us as long as as long as we're sitting on our high horses right so Paul gets thrown off the high horse and after he's thrown off the high horse he goes blind right he's blind and then we if you follow the story we see how he's prayed for and, uh, and, and this is he's baptized with the Holy Spirit and all these amazing things happen. And then it says, at that time, see, one man's conversion changes the entire situation for the church. It says, the church then, when? After Saul's conversion, Saul became Paul. After his conversion, the church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and it became stronger. How? As the believers lived in the fear of the Lord and with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. It also grew in numbers. The church became strong and it grew in numbers. Right? How? There are two ingredients here. One, they lived in the fear of the Lord. And the second is with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Just think about that. See, I believe we are in a season where God is making the church strong. And he's going to, this is the greatest harvest season that the world has seen. I believe we're just entering into now. Across the globe, nations will never be the same. They won't. Nations will never be the same because the Spirit of God is going to come and there's going to be a gathering of the harvest. Right? People's eyes are being going to be opened to see the Lord. Not for the church, however. The key here is for the church. And if you are part of our church or you're watching in from uh, another part of the world and you belong to another church, that's you're most welcome to do so. But you belong to a church. And what is the Lord telling his church? The fear of the Lord came upon the church. I believe that is such a requirement today. The fear of the Lord. And then relationship with the Holy Spirit. What is the fear of the Lord? It is reverential fear. There is reverence, honor and respect of God. Reverence, honor, respect of God. Now, honestly, I don't like to be legalistic. And I love the freedom God's given me, but my freedom does not give me the right to dishonor God or to lack respect. And this is why, church, this is why I have told you, as I've sent messages to say, come at 1030 to worship God together. Right? There is respect. You respect God with your time. Respect God with your time. Because if you don't respect God with your time, trust me, you're not going to respect God with anything. Right? Until you're in a big hole and you have nowhere, you can't go any further, 
that's the only time you turn back to God. Right? I'm telling you this time, if we must have the fear of the Lord upon the church. Right? What does that mean? That means that we live that in our mindsets. The reverential fear of God is in our mindset. It's a mindset, right? That reverence, honor, and respect of God guides the lives of everyone. See, that's what was happening in the church. The people's lives, right, in everything they did was guided by the fear of the Lord. In other words, everything, the way they spoke, their relationships, business, no matter how they did their dealings, their commerce, everything was done with respecting God, honoring God, and reverencing God. That was the key. That was the key. And the second thing, in other words, even, even, see, be careful of what you say with your mouth. See, when you and I have the fear of God, you are conscious of what you're saying. Your mouth doesn't lose, you know, loose lips. Loose lips seize when there is fear of God. You don't say dumb things. You don't say hurtful things. You don't say things to, to bring pain upon people with this mouth. You don't. Why? Because there's a reverential, there's respect and honor to God that everything I do must flow from the fear of God. Now, please understand, he's not being scared and, oh my God, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Right, you, you heard me the first time. Respect, reverence, honor. That is the fear of God. That's something we need to be, there is an, an awareness. An awareness of that. And the second is the awareness and consciousness and the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Right. And I, I, I tend to, I tend to um, uh, let's say, swear to words that it is also the Holy Spirit who helps us in our fear of God to get it right. You, we find it out as we go. Right. And I believe this is what I'm talking about. You and I need the Holy Spirit, but you need to know. Do you need him? Do you need him? Are you satisfied where you are? Right. See, the Holy Spirit is who's here right now on the earth right he is the one who's directing the church right the kingdom of god is being uh, what we say is is manage the right word i know it that's a he is the current administrator of the kingdom on the earth is the holy spirit and this is why i ask you do you have the holy spirit have you got the anointing of the holy spirit and that's key for you to answer. Right? It's key for you to answer before God. Right? The Holy Spirit that 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 transforms people. And that's what we see. See, the Apostle Paul was baptized in the Holy Spirit and he was transformed. And, and it says, then after he was transformed, there is a season of peace over the church. One man being impacted by the Holy Spirit has such an effect on the community. Now look at me, church. Can you imagine if you and I can function like that? All it takes is one person, one man, one woman. In your school, it takes one child. In university, it's one young person who has been truly transformed by the Holy Spirit that can have an amazing influence of all around. See, that's what I'm talking about. When I say that the Spirit of God is going to come upon the church and there's going to be a gathering of harvest, right? That is what it's going to be. You and I being where God has called us, not in the church. I mean, this is, I mean, talk about God, you know, being able to show us things, to show us, listen, people, to do Christianity doesn't mean you have to be huddled up in your church building on a Sunday. That is not church. The church was not called to be huddled up in a building. Read, read your Bibles. Yes, they did meet, but that was not for, you know, that was not what they considered church and then they went back. No, the church was out there. Right? They're called to be the church out there. Track with me, track with me. You know, and this is something that God is calling us as a church. Right? He's calling us as a church. You and I must have this genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit in this season. In this season. Because he has much for us to do. See, 
we are called to be witnesses of him. See, I like what Jesus does. If you go back to Acts chapter 1, Jesus has taught his disciples for now three and a half years. They have seen things that no one else up to that time living had ever seen. These guys and the others who followed with them, right? There were 70 and 120, about 120 of them actually, group. And these guys that went along with Jesus in ministry, they saw things, dead being raised, blind eyes being opened, lame walk, you know, it was just <laughs> lepers being healed. It was just mind-blowing, right? Mind-blowing. And as Jesus was leaving, he calls his disciples. And as he calls his disciples, um, he's given them a long speech, right? He's given them many speeches. And in fact, for 40 days after he resurrected, he taught them for 40 days. He re-establishes Peter, right? And now he's going. But he's saying, listen, for you guys, now you guys have a great story. You know the best story on the planet. But for you to do what you've been called to do, the story alone is not enough. You need what I needed. Now track with me. What is Jesus saying? You need what I needed. Right? Right? Which is what? The Holy Spirit. Now, if it's, it's not there in Scripture, but let's see. <laughs> Jesus, it's not there in, that, in, in what he tells them. Right? But why was he telling him about the Holy Spirit? If you think about it, how did Jesus start ministry? He started ministry when John baptized him in water. He went to John to be baptized. And as he was baptized, the heavens opened up. God the Father speaks and says, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Right? And then you see the Holy Spirit coming upon him. Beautiful. Beautiful. Then he goes to the wilderness, he's tested, he comes back, right? And he comes back, as Luke 4, 18 says, then he goes into the temple uh, and he opens the scrolls and he reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, the blind will see, the oppressed will be set free, and the time of the Lord's favor has come. See, I want you to see that. He did not do ministry apart from the anointing of the Holy Spirit on his life. He didn't take shortcuts. He didn't do anything that you and I can't do. See, he didn't cheat ministry. Right? He did ministry with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He was always an example. And because he was the example, what he's saying is, I want you to look at me and do what I'm doing. And now he says, I'm going... And I'm going to send the Holy Spirit upon you. And then he says, the Holy Spirit will come on you and you will be my witnesses. Listen to this, Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. See, this is what I'm telling you. What is he saying? I want, I have told you, I want you to learn from me. I want you to do what you've heard from me. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Right? He said, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Right? Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Then he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Beloved, church, I want you to see the importance of you and I understanding who the Holy Spirit is. And then being filled and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Right? Today is more teaching than preaching. I want you to understand this. Okay? See... The disciples, up to this very point, didn't understand kingdom. They did not get it. Right? Jesus is now going. 
three and a half years like i said walking with jesus talking with jesus seeing the impossible seeing him uh, have control over nature the oceans are stilled and they're like who is this guy who is this has the power to speak to to the, the waves and they stop like who is he and then jesus taught and he taught and he taught and he taught like i said he died he proved that he's risen from the dead and again for the next 40 days he taught and he taught and come on come on don't you think by this time they've got it by this time you think they have got it now listen just just listen to what is what he says he says he says you have heard from me right for john truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy spirit not many days from now verse 6 what do they say therefore when they had come together they asked him lord uh, will you at this time restore the kingdom to israel i uh, see see when i'm reading this i see this is exactly where the church is today this is where the church is today because most of the church including me we are just like these disciples this is where the church is today right and if you look at look at this see what was the problem with the disciples it was like all this stuff is good lord but I, you're going to restore the kingdom, right, Lord? Where, where, where we're going to be blessed and we're going to be powerful and we're we going to have uh, prosperity. Uh, right? Are you seeing this? Are you, are, are you seeing this? See, isn't that where the church is today? We need to do that which make us rich, famous, powerful, prosperous. That's the church. So I follow you, Jesus. Make me prosperous. Make me rich. Make me famous. Make me powerful. Same problem. Where is kingdom? No kingdom. And Jesus is like, oh gosh. You know, I, I don't know. I, can, I cannot. I can't wait to get to heaven to ask how he overcame this blindedness, not just with the disciples, of even people like me. Right? It's like, oh Dinesh, how many times I told you and you didn't get it. See, I want us to see that. And that's what happens. Right? They just didn't get it. They just didn't get it. See, I want you to understand, no matter how much you have learned and studied, whether you have gone to Bible school, whether you listen Monday to Sunday, you are just consuming sermon after sermon and reading the Bible cover to cover uh, every week. <laughs> it's just so brilliant. You will still not get and understand the kingdom of God without the Holy Spirit. Please understand this. It's okay if you get angry with me and you want to fight with me. You see, I don't, it doesn't really matter to me. Right? But I want you to get something which God wants you to get. Because He's chosen you. He's called you. But you need to understand His kingdom to function in His calling. And these disciples did not understand the kingdom. They did not understand the kingdom. So let me ask you today. Are you happy the way you are? Some of us will say, Pastor, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I know. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Happy for you. Those of you who have said, no, Pastor, I am not filled with the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you, would you just have a desire today? As you listen, see where you need to adjust. See where you need to adjust. Just be honest with God. Talk to Him. Even while I am speaking, if there is a point that is coming through to you, just switch me off. Right? And you talk to the Father. Talk to the Holy Spirit. And say, Holy Spirit, mm, maybe I am I'm not quite there. Right? You process as, as you are listening. See, are you happy where you are? My question is, are you sure you have enough oil when you hear the trumpet sound? Are you sure you have enough oil? Because you may look it, you may sound it. But the question is, when the trumpet sound comes, will you have enough oil? See, let's look at some of these areas we need to look at. Right? Firstly, let me ask you, are you a witness of Him? Are you a witness of Him? See, what does Jesus say? Verse 8. But you shall receive 
power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. You shall be witnesses to me. And then he says, where Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world. See, let me ask you a question. Are you a witness to Jesus? See, the purpose of the Holy Spirit. See, look at this. What was the purpose of the Holy Spirit? The anointing of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. To be a witness unto him. Correct? That's, that's what he says in his word. Who is a witness? Who is a witness? A witness is a person that is put on the stand, right? In a, in a court of law. And what are they supposed to do? If for whatever question that is asked, they are supposed to give an answer. What is the purpose of a witness? Whether it's for the prosecution or it's for the defense, what's the purpose of the witness? The purpose of the witness is that when that person speaks, that the jury who listens will say, absolutely right. This person is absolutely right. That is why you are called to be a witness. That when you speak as a witness, that those who are hearing will have no doubt that your story is correct. That's a witness. That's what it means to be a witness. So let me ask you, when people ask you about who this Jesus, or when you try to tell people about Jesus, right? are you being that absolute proof of the resurrected Christ? Just think about that. Does that happen in your life? Does that happen? Because if it's not happening, uh, that's why I'm telling you, I'm looking at my life at this time. I said, Lord, when you, are about, when you are doing, I know you're doing, you started something and you're just going to bring this great outpouring. I want more because I am not there yet. I talk to people who don't know Christ, but when I finish the conversation with them, they are not lining up and saying, can I know Jesus? Can you baptize me? No, they're not there yet. Which means I am not a good enough witness for Christ yet. I am a good preacher, I hope, to some of you. But he didn't call us to be preachers. He called us to be witnesses. Hello, are you with me? We have missed something. As pastors, we are looking to be great preachers. So that people will come and say, oh, bravo, what a sermon, what a guy. No! That is not our calling. Our calling is when I preach, when you speak and I speak, people are lining up and saying, I want to know Jesus. Not to say, wow, I love that point you spoke. I never thought, I never saw that point. No, that I'm missing. I'm just reaching your intellect. No, the Holy Spirit doesn't come just to meet your intellect. It's okay, you must keep your intellect. Don't lose your intellect. Right? But there is... Intellect to intellect, no, there is no spirit. The Holy Spirit must come because it's the Spirit of God that changes the hearts. Now watch with me, watch with me. Right? My famous man, one of my most favorite guys because I think I'm a lot like this man. You've heard me saying before who? Big Mouth Peter. Right? Big Mouth Peter, I like this guy because um, I find my, uh, I have a lot of his traits. Foot in mouth disease, foot in mouth, always putting my foot in it because I can't keep my mouth shut. And, well, I'm not going to apologize sometimes. Uh, God pats me and says, thank you for your boldness, son. So I'm okay with that. Right? Now, what happens here? If you go and continue reading Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost comes, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Right? And what happens? What happens to Peter? Now, listen, these disciples, now you, you, you heard me, right? Acts chapter 1. When Jesus says the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, you're going to be my witnesses, you're going to receive power. What is the answer? Yeah, so when are you getting the kingdom uh, restored? The kingdom, when are we coming into power? When are we kicking out the Romans? That, uh, right? That's what they were. But now, look, now look at these guys. One of their leaders, one of their leaders being Peter. Right? The Holy Spirit comes upon him on the day of Pentecost. What happens next? There are people gathered there. And here Peter steps up. And then Peter starts preaching. <laughs> A man who never preached before. Think about this. His first sermon. Hello. His first sermon. Do you hear Peter preaching before? No. 
His first sermon. Right? What happens? This guy, who had glimpses of the spirit, right? He see, he, he had a glimpse, and Jesus says, Who do you say I am? He says, You are the Christ, and he's like, hey, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. No, I didn't get it. <laughs> Why? Because he says that and Jesus have got to die. No, you can't. You can't go to be crucified. You can't go and die. I will not permit it. What happens? Jesus says, get, behind, get thee behind me, Satan. Because he allowed the, 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 the devil to speak through him. See, he didn't get it. See, that Peter is now here again. But there's a difference about him, right? Suddenly he's speaking and what is he talking? Honestly, you read, you read that sermon, right? I was reading this yesterday and I'm reading this Acts chapter 2 where Peter is preaching. My goodness, he is grabbing scripture from the prophet Joel, right? He is bringing scriptures from here. He is bringing scriptures from there. And suddenly the man who didn't know his left foot from his right foot, right? is bringing all these scriptures together. And he is speaking something and telling them about this Jesus through scripture. Who, who is speaking? Peter. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Somehow, when did he go to Bible school? Did he like, okay, while these other guys were praying in the upper room, he was like, no, you know, I just heard uh, CTS is having an intensive, one day intensive, a one week intensive, right? And I'm just going to, you guys pray, I'll just go do this one week intensive uh, on, on, uh, on the Old Testament and Christ. And then and he turns up on that, no, this is not what happened. Then what happened? What happened? How did this ordinary man suddenly make sense of the Old Testament and he brings it piece by piece, he puts it together and he puts it out and 3,000 people are cut to the heart and they say, we want to accept Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit on a person's life. The Holy Spirit comes upon you and all the scriptures that you know and you've been using in the wrong way, right? I don't know about you. I've been using scripture in the wrong way a lot of times. And now I look and I laugh at myself. Honestly, I've told you, church, I've come and told you, forgive me for some of my early day sermons. Because some of those sermons I preach, uh, I hope you got something from it because the Holy Spirit can still do something even with, a, with nonsense sermons. But that is not the right, that was out of context, right? Not that I'm an expert now, but I'm certainly better than what I was before. Right? It's because of the Holy Spirit, because of the revelation He gives. Because when He is upon you, scriptures make sense. And Peter speaks with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And what does he do? He is a witness unto Jesus. And as he witnesses unto Jesus, 3,000 souls give their lives to Jesus. Let me ask you, do you think you need the Holy Spirit? Are you a witness to Him? Are you a witness to Him? See, somehow, think about this. See, honestly, if we don't get our hands dirty and dig deep and, and be real with our lives, we'll float along lost. You know, I can make you feel nice and preach sweet sermons to you and you'll just happily float about. I was telling Dinu last night, I was saying, you know, Dinu, I'm, I'm just, 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 uh, my biggest fear is that end of the day when I go there, the Lord will say, this is pathetic. You had no clue. I don't know what you were teaching. I'm so scared about that. And so I'm like, Holy Spirit, show me. Lord, teach me. Show me. I don't want to teach nonsense to people. Show me your truth. I'd rather speak two lines and shut my mouth, which is truth, than speak like for one hour, which I normally do, and speak a whole heap of nonsense. I don't want to do that. And this is why I don't know about you. I'm saying, Lord, I need more. Holy Spirit, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you because I want to be a witness. I want to be a witness. 
See, because I find myself very often, as a Christian, I find myself having to convince people that Jesus is Lord. Now please understand, nowhere in scripture did Jesus ever ask us to convince the world that he is Lord. See, somewhere we got it mixed up. You and I are constantly trying to convince people that Jesus said, no, he didn't say it. Convince, go there, come up with the right things and you can convince. No, he said, he didn't say any of that. He said, go and be what? A witness unto whom? Unto me. What does that even mean? What does it mean to be a witness unto him? Can I tell you, being a witness unto him is you telling people that this God that they thought was dead 2,000 years ago is very much alive. And not only is he very much alive, he's very much in your life. And not only if he's in your life, a being in your life, he is doing stuff in your life, he's transforming you and the things he's doing that bring glory to Jesus. And as you do that, people are going to say, I want to know this Jesus. Because he's alive in your life. Because you are a living witness of Jesus Christ. In your life, not just with your words. Hello. Our problem is, we are trying to convince people with arguments and our words. Where is the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Where is the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? I'm not just talking about, oh, the Holy Spirit is in my life and I just prayed and this moved and that moved and I just prayed and poof, this came into my bank account. That's not what I'm talking about. And that's the, that's the, I'm not talking about manipulating or trying to manipulate the Holy Spirit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how you are trying. So you know something, can I tell you, church? If you ask me, pastor, what is the, as you know, I'm a man of stories, right, of my life. What is one of the most powerful testimonies in your life that impacts people who don't know Jesus. Can I tell you which the story is? You don't mind me telling you all the story, right? It's the story when I share about how God changed my rotten temper. When I share how God helped me with my anger issues as a father and as a human being. Right? When I share that I had terrible anger problems, right, which uh, I didn't teach, treat my little children properly then, right? And about my anger issues, and I tell them about how God transformed me, how this living God changed a miserable wretch like me, that today my children complain that I don't get angry with the young fellow. Right? They complain and say it's not fair. And my answer is don't blame me, blame God. He's the one who changed me. If I'm an angry man, I'm not as angry as I was before. Can I tell you that testimony has more people who don't know God. Line up and tell me, you know what pastor, uh, your message today, that story really spoke to me. What is that? What about that story? It's about a living God who transforms lives today. That is being a witness to Jesus. Jesus is alive today. You see, no arguments there. You see, beloved, you and I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And you and I must see the power of God working in our lives. And then we'll talk about what God is doing in our lives and we witness unto Jesus. So people see Jesus. Hallelujah. See, I want us to understand your heart condition defines your eligibility to receive the Holy Spirit. If you're sitting there saying, okay, I want the Holy Spirit. How do I receive it? See, this is why I, I went very different. You know, I was my, my standard how to be filled with the Holy Spirit sermon, right? You've heard it many times. Many of you have, right? But today I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into that because I want us to see things in a different way, right? Because like I said, you can know A to Z or Z on, on what must be done. But these key ingredients, without this, you can do step A, B, C, D, all the way to Z or Z, whatever you call it, and not see anything. Because these ingredients are key. Right? And can I tell you, your heart condition, the condition of your heart determines, determines if you will be filled with the Holy Spirit or anointed with the Holy Spirit or not. I'll show you. Go to Acts chapter 8. How are we doing for time? Okay. 
right? Well, I'm going to fast forward a bit here. In Acts chapter 8, it talks about the apostles went to Jerusalem. Uh, 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 the apostles in Jerusalem heard that in Samaria that they uh, received the word of God and so they sent Peter and John to these people who had come down and they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit had not fallen on them yet right um, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus right then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit now that's not the story really but that's what precedes it then when the Holy Spirit came upon these people, there was a man called Simon. Simon. When Simon saw that through the laying of hands of the apostles, that the Holy Spirit was given, what does he say? He comes and he offers them money. Right? He offers them money saying, give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you. Don't run after money, it perishes. Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Verse 21. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. Why? For your heart is not right with God. If your heart is not right with God, you can neither have a portion in the matter of the Holy Spirit. You cannot have the Holy Spirit if your heart is not right with God. You can know all the steps. You can know all the prayers. But if your heart is not right with God, you are not getting the Holy Spirit. Therefore, repent, therefore, of your wickedness and pray to God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. This is why I keep telling you, church, as long as you have unforgiveness, bitterness and iniquity in your heart, you will not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, you can say, yeah, yeah, but that's okay. I got baptized 10 years ago. How is it going now? How is it going now? Are you witness unto him? Yes, I know. Many of us, when we got saved first, we were witnesses, I can tell you. In 1985, when I gave my life to Christ the first time, I gave my life to him twice because I gave it and I took it back. Right? Uh, I remember the first time I came from a camp, I couldn't stop talking about Jesus. Everywhere I went, I'm telling people about Jesus. Wow. That's what it was. Well, guess what? As time goes on, the number of times you tell, talk about Jesus reduces. See, I want that initial thing. Even now, you're talking about a pastor. See, I am preaching to the, to, to the saved. I am teaching, which is my job actually. My job is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Right? So I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I hope I am. I think I am. You need to tell me if I'm not, right? That's my job. But I'm also called to be a witness unto him, to the people who don't know him. And that's what I was all the time. And that's why I'm saying, Lord, I want more of that. I want more of your spirit because I want to be a better witness. I want to be a, be a witness to people who don't know you. That they may see you and know you. See, you and I are never asked to convince people that Jesus is the Christ. No. But we are asked to be a witness to him that through our lives and through what we share about Jesus in our lives they will have an encounter with the Holy Spirit and they will receive Jesus Christ are you with me still still there right hallelujah see there has to be a level of faith there has to be a level of faith as Galatians 3 verse 13 to 14 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. I will say that again. That we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. You receive the promise of the Holy Spirit how? Through faith. You need faith. You have to have faith in this Jesus. 
right? You have to have faith in Jesus. Right? It's what he says, I give you the Holy Spirit. You have to have faith in Jesus. See? Now, in this season, if you want a double portion of the Holy Spirit than you have, or if you want at least a single portion of the Holy Spirit that you don't have, some of you have said, I don't mind a double portion, Lord. Those of you say, I'm not sure whether I have. Can I have one portion? That's just fine. Right. Can I tell you this? This is key ingredients. Again, like I said, you may know step one, two, three, four, five. You can read it. You can Google it and find all the steps how to receive the baptism. But can I tell you, the condition of your heart is key. The condition of what, what is in here is key to receiving. Right. And can I tell you, therefore, the Holy Spirit is given to those who are willing to follow or obey what he says. The Holy Spirit is given to those who are willing to follow or obey what he says. See, Romans 8, 14 says this. What? Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God or the children of God. In today's version, it's children of God. Right? Those who are what? Led by the Spirit. What does it mean to be led by the Spirit? Means, what does it say that about you? You are following. He is leading, you are following. See, the Holy Spirit is given to those who will follow what he says. Not those who want it because it is the fashionable thing to have. It is a fashionable thing to have because you don't want to be at meetings when everyone suddenly starts speaking in tongues and you don't speak in tongues. It feels a little odd. <laughs> if that's the reason you want the Holy Spirit, not happening. The Holy Spirit is given to those who are willing to follow and obey. Who are willing to follow and obey. See, track with me. You remember I told you uh, a few minutes ago about how Jesus was baptized? The Holy Spirit came upon him, right? The Father speaks, the Holy Spirit comes. What happened next? What happens next? If you read what happens next is this. It says, Then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted in the wilderness. Oh. What is that? What is that? Uh, you have to be willing to follow the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. See, Jesus... When he was baptized and anointed with the Holy Spirit, he was now led into the wilderness. Holy Spirit takes us to the wilderness. He does. No, boss, I don't think that's... No, 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 no. Read your Bible. It is very clear. Jesus was led by whom? The Holy Spirit. For what? To be tempted. Are you kidding me? Holy Spirit leads you to be tempted. Yes, he did that. Why? Why? Because he wants to see you crash and burn? No. No. He is testing you. Because he wants you to pass those tests. Without those tests, without you passing these tests, you can never be an effective leader. You can never be effective in ministry. This is where lots of leaders fail. When the Holy Spirit takes you to a place, where there will be testing. Many give in to the temptations and fail. Many anointed men, many chosen men, when they go into the testing, they were chosen by God. But in the testing, in the testing, without relying on the Holy Spirit, without relying on the word, word of God, they get deceived by the deceiver. And then they fall. Then they fall. See, can I tell you in this season, don't say, I want the Holy Spirit because the uh, pastor said everyone is going to get. No, no. Everyone is going to get, so I want to get doesn't work. That's not kingdom. That's not how this works. Are you willing to be led by the Holy Spirit? Are you willing to be led by the Holy Spirit? And I was excited a couple of days ago. There is this uh, young couple in our church. And they called me and they said that God's been speaking to them. And they uh, said, uh, Pastor, we want to talk to you. So I was listening to them and they both said how they both feel very strongly to go and share the Holy Spirit or share, share Jesus with their neighbors during this lockdown. I was like, wow, 
wow. And uh, we started talking about it and said, how do we do this? You know, how, how should we approach it? And they were trying to get my advice on how to do this. And I was also asking the Lord and, and, and we were talking about it, right? Uh, and I was so, so excited. Right? I was so excited. They were getting strategies for how we do this. I gave my little two cents for what it's worth. See, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to come upon us like that. That is an example of the Holy Spirit coming upon people to say, I want you now to go and be witnesses. See, why did the Holy Spirit come? To make us witnesses of him. Please understand, witnesses of whom? Of Jesus. Right? That is what is going to happen in this season. The Holy Spirit is going to come on those who are willing to be led by him to places that they're uncomfortable. Can I tell you, I, they're both so nervous. I am nervous for them. It's almost like, it's uncomfortable. What did they say? No, you know, your mind is saying every negative thing, right? In fact, um, uh, uh, one of them said, we, we, we'll postpone this. Hell, no postponing. If the Holy Spirit said it, you're doing it, right? Yes, we're doing it. We're doing it. Right? I said, let the Holy Spirit set it up. Let the Holy Spirit set it up. See, I'm telling you, it's, he's going to call you and I to do uncomfortable things. Why is that? Because it's uncomfortable in my mind. I, I don't know if you, if you were there with us on Friday when Pastor Prasad was talking about the Holy Spirit is going to make you risk. Risk. See, can I tell you, nothing you do with Jesus is a risk. But the risk factor is in your head because you're trusting an invisible God. That's the problem. That's the problem you and I have. That's the problem. Right? Because to do something when God says is never a risk. That's a guaranteed. Think about who is saying. Think about who is saying. I like what Nalaka said a little while ago in his testimony. When he said, I was insecure and I used to go for meetings, I couldn't get anything out properly, right? He would struggle at meetings until he realized he needs to deal with an insecurity and I don't know if you caught it. And then he said, I realized who is with me. There you go. He says, now I realized who's got my back, who is with me. You see, if the Holy Spirit is leading you, guess who is with you? Who is with you? The Holy Spirit. Can I tell you a little about him? Just give you a few minutes. You know who he was? He was there in the beginning. You know, he was the one who's hovering over the earth. He's hovering. He's like, just tell me. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. From the very beginning of time. He is God, by the way. Holy Spirit is also God. And the three of them are having a talk. The Father is like, um... He's hovering. And the, the Spirit of God was hovering. I like that word. Hovering. Like It's like... He's hovering. Like, I want to make a move. He's hovering. Right? And then God says, um, let there be light. Right? And Jesus is like, yeah, he agrees, I agree. And the Holy Spirit is like, light it is. Whoosh, light. See, I want you to see who this Holy Spirit is. I want you to see who this Holy Spirit is. Oh, he's just amazing. He's just amazing. And he's saying, come, I want you to partner with me. I want you to partner with me. See, I want you to understand. If he's calling you, it's not a risk. The risk part is the battle you have inside your head. And if you can convince, if you can come to the truth of, wait a minute, who is with me? You remember we did Caleb and Joshua? When they saw giants, they said, giants? Who is with me? The God of promise. What is giants? See, it's time to learn to change the way you think. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, I'm telling you, you will change the way you think. You will not see giants. Your, your mind will battle a little bit and feel uncomfortable. But no, the Holy Spirit is coming upon those who are willing to be led by him. This is not a fashion statement. Right? Holy Spirit is not a fashion accessory. Right? He's a transformer of lives. And you decide if you need your life transformed or not. Are you still with me? I want you to know there is a price to pay. Now this you must know. Right? I believe next Sunday we are going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But before I pray for you, you must know this. You must know this. There is a price.
to pay. There is a price to pay. Are you willing to pay that price for having the Holy Spirit on your life? Are you willing to pay the price? Right. See, I want you to understand. On the day of Pentecost, there was one group of people in one location, in all of Jerusalem. You take all of Jerusalem, the Feast of Pentecost, people came from all over the world. Right? Many tribes, many tongues, many languages. But there was one house or room, the upper room, that had 120 people that were different to all the thousands that was there who were Jews. What was the difference? Right. These 120 with the 12 disciples and the others. Jesus said, I am going up and I want you to tarry. I want you to stay and I want you to contend. I don't want you walking off. I don't want you sleeping it off. Track with me, please, because you've had two months and more. Have you been sleeping it off? Or have you been contending for the Holy Spirit and God? You choose, because what you do will determine what you receive. These guys contended. As the Bible says, they were in unity. They were in one accord. They were together in one accord. How many days? Seven days. How do you I know? Well, Feast of the Passover, Feast of Pentecost, 50 days apart. Okay? Jesus resurrected and we them with them for 40 days, which leaves us 10 days. Jesus resurrected three days after the Feast of Passover. Take away those three days. Then you get left with seven. Ten take away three, seven. So for one entire week, they contended because Jesus said, you wait, you contend, you tarry, you tarry, you wait for the Holy Spirit and he will come upon you. And they were willing, they were intentional and they were willing to wait. And as they waited, the thousands got nothing. These 120 got the Holy Spirit. See, very quickly, Luke 11, 9 to 13 says this also. I tell you, Keep on asking and you will receive. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. Everyone who knocks the door will be open. You fathers, if your children ask for fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you are sinful fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children. Here it is. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? It's not. Okay, everybody, he's talking about Holy Spirit. Mm. Okay, I'll have, I'll have a dose of a Holy Spirit, please. No, that's not what it is. It's content. I want. I want. I want. I want. The Holy Spirit, please, beloved. Your hunger. I'm ending with this. Your hunger makes a hunger for God. A hunger for God is what qualifies you or makes you the ideal candidate to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. So today, let me ask you, beloved, as I said, are you a witness? Those of you who say I have the Holy Spirit, when you speak, are they lining up to give their lives to Jesus? Or are they not? Or are you finding yourself, I need to convince them, I need to convince them then something is out of alignment. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses. Not you will be my convincers, no. You will be my witnesses. Witnesses. Like I said, there has to be a heart that is saying, Lord, you lead, I will follow. Right? You need to have a right heart. You need humility. Beloved, I just want to throw that one in. Without humility, so there is a danger today. The more, uh, you see, uh, if, if you look at the people in the Bible, I said, I just take, take Peter and Paul, these two men. Once they were both filled with the Holy Spirit, they were both proud and arrogant before. But after they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they became more humble and humble and humble. I like what the Apostle Paul said when he came, I think it was in the book of Timothy. 
towards the latter part, he says, I am the greatest sinner. He didn't say I'm the greatest prophet, by the way. He didn't say I'm the greatest prophet of them all. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say I'm the prophet. No, he didn't say that. The, the Apostle Paul said, I'm the greatest of sinners. See, the more of the Holy Spirit in their lives, the more humble they became. Ah, that is a witness unto Jesus. There are more times that the Bible talks in the New Testament over being servant than any other exalted position. Servant. So let me ask you, what is your Christianity looking like at the moment? Should there be a change? Should there be a shift? I want a shift. I want a change. I want more. I want more. See, people are going around and saying, what's your calling? Brother, what's your calling? Sister, what's your calling? We all have one calling. Be a witness unto him. Don't go wrong. What is your calling? That's the problem with the church today. Well, my calling is to be the best worship leader. No, uh, in that last thing, I, I didn't see. Did you see? Have you all seen that? He said, I'm going now and therefore I want you to be a great worship leader. You to be a great preacher. You, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. But he told, I want you to go make disciples of all. The Great Commission has, you go and make disciples. But here he says, the Holy Spirit will come about you to do all that. And you will be my witnesses. Our number one priority is witnessing. Be a witness unto Jesus. Church has to change. You have to change. I have to change. Let's go back. That's what I believe. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon the church. And we are going to be like the church in the book of Acts. You and I are going to be transformed. You and I who are like the disciples. You have read the word. You know the word. But you don't get the kingdom. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and I, we are going to bring this peace together. Like Peter, he takes this Joel, he takes Isaiah, he takes different scriptures and he puts together a so I, I guess he would have been like, whoa, what did he just do? <laughs> you know, he would have just blown his mind. You know, he would have been like, wow, 3,000 3, 3, came? Who spoke? Who spoke? The guy said, hey, wake up, wake up. You spoke, Peter. You, you. Me? Yeah, you. That's what the Holy Spirit can do. So I just want to invite you on this journey. I want to invite you on this journey. Will you join me? Will you come with me? See, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Now don't get upset with me. We have seven days to the day of Pentecost. From today. Right. Seven days to the day of Pentecost. I am calling you to a seven day fast. Will you join me for a seven day fast to intentionally, right? Though we are separated in locations, we are not separated in spirit. We can do so many things unitedly. Would you join me to seek him intentionally? I'm not just talking about, you know, the ability to pray for one or two people and then get healed. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how many have we won to the, church, how, to the kingdom? How many have come to the kingdom? No, I'm talking about a level. That God is going to increase of that river of the Holy Spirit in our lives. right? That is going to transform you and me. That when you and I speak, it won't be the same person. When you and I speak, they're going to say, what happened to Dines? I heard he was a pastor, but have you heard him now? My gosh, people are giving their lives to Jesus. What happened to so-and-so? What happened to so-and-so? You remember them. It's like what Nalaka said. When I come out of this, I am not the same man. But I just don't want him. Nalaka, I just don't want you to be full of knowledge of your business. But I want you to go back full of the Holy Spirit. Where you are going and you are going to shine in that business. Beyond what knowledge can do. And then people are going to say, uh, What's up with you? There is something. My goodness, there is something about you. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Shall we do this? Will you join me in fasting? Seven days. We start today. Right? And I tell you, I'm calling all you young people to join me. Right? I'm telling you, you are a key component of this end time harvest. You are a key, key component. And you can disqualify yourself by trying to be, what, haphazard? Or 
You can do the impossible by saying, yes, Lord, count me in. I'm telling you, I, if you want to be intentional, that means a lot of media has to be cut off this week. Would you do that? Are you willing to cut off your gaming, your binging of videos and TV and all that? Would you do that? Would you do that with me? See, like I said, food is for a different generation. When fasting of food was a big deal, different generation. To a younger generation, food is nothing for you. You all can skip meals like this, but you can't skip media, can you? <laughs> Things have changed. Let's be relevant. This is, please, please, no, please, let me tell you this much. Don't do this to prove any point to me. Because I can't give you the Holy Spirit. Honestly, I can't. Don't do this to prove to God, see how good I am. Like I said, the heart is going to be off. You can, as they told Simon, you can't buy this for money. No, can you impress God and get it? It won't happen. But you humble yourself and say, Lord, I am going to hunger for God. I am going to hunger for you. I am going to come after you because I am hungry for you. Two things. I am going to be hungry for you and I am going to obey whatever you say. I am going to let you lead me. If you lead me, I will follow. And as long as I know you are with me and how scary it may think in my natural mind to do this, I will do it. As long as I know you are with me. To do that, would you join me this week? And say, Lord, I am going to fast. I'm not just going to talk the talk. I'm going to walk the talk. And I'm going to tell you, Lord, you are something I long for. I desire you. And I will obey you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm.